Demon Slayer is a universally loved anime, popularity-wise. Critically speaking, it's a bit more divisive. Demon Slayer is known for not really having the most complex or masterful narrative in the world, and considered to be simply carried by its animation, because according to the anime buffs, if you decided to read the manga, it wouldn't be as pretty and all of its glaring issues would be brought to the forefront. However, some disagree with that notion, saying that Demon Slayer isn't carried by animation, and that its simplicity Simplicity is a good thing. Some say it's only good because of animation. Some say the simplicity is the charm. Some say reading the manga would make you think otherwise. Some say fuck you. It's really good. You're stupid. Your opinion is stupid. So which one of these claims do I think hold the most weight? All of them. In my eyes, all four of them are correct. In fact, here's what I think. Demon Slayer is carried by animation. That's a good thing. Now, let me be as clear as I can be. I am also guilty of making fun of Demon Slayer. I used to pass it off as normie bullshit that didn't really have much going for it outside of its animation. Everybody told me that it was cliche, kind of generic, and that I would like it, but I wouldn't really love it, so I just kind of passed it off for a while. Later on in life, I really started to appreciate visuals and aesthetics in storytelling so much more, to the point where some of my favorite pieces of media of all time have been the ones where the story and message is kind of vague, but the visuals are the main appeal, or kind of the main talking point. That's one of the main reasons I love Bloodborne, 2001 A Space Odyssey, The Gray Man, Mad God, and so on and so forth. While there's a lot more to these properties than meets the eye, and even though story and characters will always go a longer way for me, I've accepted that there's nothing wrong with an aesthetic or a style being a key draw to why you like something so much. Because, surprise surprise, this is a visual medium and the visuals should be very important. Now with this in mind, I did end up really enjoying Demon Slayer. I wouldn't say I love it, but I really like and respect Demon Slayer. It's okay if you don't like Demon Slayer because maybe it's a bit too tropey, maybe you yearn for something more complex or something that takes more risks. And yeah, Demon Slayer's story isn't perfect or anything. As much as I'm debating this carried by animation notion, I can see where they're coming from. Demon Slayer can be pretty formulaic and repetitive in its arc structure. While I think the characters change in subtle but meaningful ways in my eyes, and I don't think they're as one-dimensional as people claim, I can see why people would want more from them. And in this recent season, many have felt that the pacing has been pretty weird oh, yeah. to say the least. Lock in, Tanjiro. Like, I feel like they end in the middle of a scene. But when I hear people say it's only good because of animation, well, first off, that kind of downplays Demon Slayer's other strengths as a series, and secondly, it kind of belittles animation as a medium, as if animation is more of a bonus or an additive rather than a form of expression, a respectable art form. The whole point of a cartoon is that it's a cartoon. An anime should fully utilize its animation to tell whatever story it's telling in the best way it possibly can, in my opinion. This is a visual medium, and in a visual medium, presentation is everything. And presentation can apply to almost everything, not just spectacle. Presentation when it comes to how you present your dialogue and characters matters as well. Again, if you prefer an innovative story over visuals, that's your preference, that's fine. But if you truly don't think that the animation has that much of a bearing over the quality of an action anime where the fights are the key draw, or you simply think it's a shallow reason to enjoy an anime? Then why are you watching anime? Why don't you just read a fucking book or something? But Fumbus, what about the manga? Isn't that a major point of criticism as well? Well, <laughs> after I, Fumbus Wumbus, have voyaged into the depths of the manga world in pursuit of proving the haters wrong, I was pleased to discover... Yeah, they're kinda right. I don't think the Demon Slayer manga is very entertaining, and I think this is where the simplicity of Demon Slayer goes from a charming bonus to kind of just being, I mean, you know, it's kinda cool, I like it, but... And this is not to do with the story of Demon Slayer per se, as I feel this is more so because the art of the manga isn't 
too great. I feel really bad critiquing art since I am also someone who does art and I've not gotten nearly as successful with mine as Koyo Haru Gotoge has with theirs and I don't want to act like I know exactly what I'm talking about just because I'm voyaging into the manga world filled with artists who are eons above me in artistic skill. Uh, but I'll try my best. When compared to its fierce competition, I don't really think Demon Slayer stacks up very well. The art itself isn't very detailed, and it doesn't have to be, but the choreography and flow in the manga is very flat. There isn't a sense of motion or weight to these fights, and provides mainly very simple and brief slash lines that fail to give the fights a sense of real energy. Now obviously the characters and such are still the same likable fellows, which is good because I really love Inosuke, and the art at the end of the day is still what I would consider fine art, and is perfectly readable, but for a story as simple and combat heavy as Demon Slayer, I do think it needs that extra push in presentation. My Hero Academia's art would have been perfect for Demon Slayer. Such pristine detail, you feel a stronger sense of impact with the blows, perfect for Demon Slayer's streamline approach where you get to the fights fairly quickly. Or even something like Jujutsu Kaisen, which isn't extremely detailed or clean, but the sketchy nature allows for these fights to go even further with its choreography and posing. But Demon Slayer doesn't fulfill either role. It doesn't have the detail or polish of let's say My Hero, Sun Ken Rock, Berserk, or Kingdom, nor does it have the raw energy of a Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man Bleach, or Black Clover. But here's the thing. Another series came out of the blue that had a similar circumstance, at least in my eyes. Record of Ragnarok. Please note that I have not read Record of Ragnarok as of this recording, correct any errors I make about it, but as far as I'm concerned, it is a simple tournament style manga where gods and historical figures duke it out in these amazing illustrations coupled with backstories. Simple, amazing fights, backstories. Hmm. And yet, people seem to love Record of Ragnarok because of this. The Ragnarok? Something oh like yes, that. yes, yes, yes. That's that's uh, that's only like thirty chapters old, but mm -hmm. my god, it is fucking great. <laughs> oh, that sounds pretty fucking cool. No, yeah. it's fucking awesome. Yeah, like even comparing it to like other anime or other shonen, it's just it's it's good. It's it's. it's, it's oh, I don't even think it's in like my top three shonen. Oh, it's definitely not in my top no, three it's, shonen. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> now, obviously, this is an absolute since Record of Ragnarok is far less popular than Demon Slayer, meaning it's gonna get a lot less hate. And they probably do things differently, of course. Like, maybe the backstories in Record of Ragnarok are handled better than in Demon Slayer, for example. There are many different factors at play. But I guess when we look at it at kind of a surface level, isn't it kind of weird that the big anime buffs, or dare I say, elitists, will praise Record of Ragnarok for being hype and having awesome fights, but kind of downplay Demon Slayer for doing sort of the same thing? And then you look at Vagabond and One Punch Man. Now these are series that have way more depth than I'm going to get into today, nor can I. What I'm about to say does not represent them as a whole. But the point of discussion that always comes back to these series, the first thing I've ever heard from these series, the main selling point of these series to get people to read them is the artwork. Whatever amazing things you want to say about them, Vagabond and One Punch Man are best known for their artwork. I really do think that if Demon Slayer had artwork on par with something like Record of Ragnarok, or even something like Sun Ken Rock, it would have so much more respect from anime veterans. Because now you can't complain because they're both so damn pretty. I mean, I can't be too hard on them. Demon Slayer is a pretty difficult series to rank. You can tell a lot of people don't want to give Demon Slayer too much credit for not being too unique and not having the most amazing story in the world. But the animation is just so good, man. It's got the art direction, the sound design, the way it sets the moods for certain scenes. It's got the fun characters and the emotional moments. It's got heart. But for some people, it's got some other problems. Thoughts on Demon Slayer Online have been so divisive, and every side has demonstrated a good level of detail and merit. 
Honestly, you can give Demon Slayer any one of these rankings and make a pretty interesting argument for all of them. But at the end of the day, we simply don't live in a world where, let's say, Studio Dean gives it the 7 Deadly Sins treatment. Oh, it's him. animated by Ufotable, and now it's the best it can ever be. All I'm trying to say is that Demon Slayer is really pretty, and I don't think there's anything wrong with liking it because it's pretty. So how about this? Let's do a little thought experiment, okay? Now, this idea would most likely be a really extreme change for Demon Slayer and it'd be hard to account for everything because of how much information there is to know in Demon Slayer, but shh, don't worry about the plot holes, just think. Okay, so let's take Demon Slayer, keep the characters the same, same general story beats, same general production, same general product, right? But make it a silent animation. Let me explain. So media buffs, elitists, whatever you want to call them, really love artsy media, right? And a type of artsy media is silent films, not those silent films, okay? I mean the ones with little to no dialogue, and while there might be a hidden meaning behind the product, the cinematography and effects take center stage in terms of enjoyment. I'm not saying this change is going to fix every one of Demon Slayer's issues, but what you must know is that critics eat that shit for breakfast. They eat that shit like Hot Pockets. So take Demon Slayer and remove most of the dialogue so now the animation works even harder to show the characters emoting and communicate vital information in a more subtle way. You know, show don't tell. I like to think this version would also help with the pacing of Demon Slayer a little bit, since there's not as much dialogue so less time is spent entirely on backstories and downtime when they aren't fighting the demons. It would kind of make things move a little bit quicker, you know, a bit more efficient. Take away the source material. This is an anime only series, so now they can't rip on the source material and they can go only off of the anime. And even though Demon Slayer already has a very distinguished look to its characters, just for good measure, let's give this version a bit of a minimalist art style, akin to something like Samurai Jack, you know? It gives it a very unique look that catches their attention, as it looks very different from your average anime. A silent, minimalist, action anime only series. With this change, what do you think would be the reception of Demon Slayer then? Let me know.